Life is all about change. And as they, as they say, change is a constant. Change is a constant. Because if you don't change by choice, shaitan will change you by force. It's a matter of decision. You either decide to change favorably and take control of your life, which is your mission in this world, which is the reason you are created, which is the reason Allah put everything at your service. Because you are the decision maker in this world. The sun doesn't decide its course. The moon doesn't. Rain doesn't. The whole world doesn't. Vegetation doesn't. Plants, animals, they don't decide anything about their lives. They're just programmed to behave in a certain way and follow a certain course. You're the only one given choice. The angels don't decide. They just follow the instructions. You, human beings and the jinn are the only ones who are given choice. And these are the only two sources where corruption comes about. Because they make the wrong decisions. So one of the biggest gifts Allah has given us, Allah has given each one of us, is choice, the ability to decide, the ability to choose which route you take, the ability to choose what action to do, what steps to make, the ability to relate to things, how to understand the world around you, how to understand yourself, how to understand people around you, how to understand events that take place. All of this is a matter of decision. You're making decisions at every single moment of your life. But most of us, most of us have given up this gift and we let the society choose for us. We let our culture choose for us. We let sometimes our friends and peers choose for us. We let our teachers choose for us. We let our parents chose for, choose for us. We let the TV choose for us. We let our politicians choose for us. But on the day of judgment, you will deal with the consequences of all those choices, whether you made them or let someone else take them for you. You will face the consequences on the day of judgment. You will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Alone. In some narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, even a mother on the day of judgment will come to her son and she would say, oh my son, I held you in my womb nine months. I looked after you. I breastfed you. And I stayed up all night just to look after you. I wasted my life and my years just for you to grow up and become independent. And you became independent and successful. Now all what I want from you, that's on the day of judgment. My son, she, she, she tries to draw his heart nearer by mentioning everything she did for him. Then she says, oh my son, in exchange of all of this, all what I'm asking for is one hasana, one good deed, one reward. Just give me one reward from your records so I can be saved from the hellfire. I just can secure a position or a place in paradise. That's all what I'm asking of you. You know what? That son, with all his respect and love for his mother, he says, Mom, with all respect. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. The hasana you're asking for, I'm more in need of it than anyone else. Some other time, some other time. On that day, you will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and you will be asked about every single decision. The woman passing down the street that you looked at and you kept staring at will be brought to you live. You could see it. The moment you were alone and did something wrong, the moment you took some haram money that doesn't belong to you, the moment you dealt with riba, the moment you were backbiting some, some, someone or slandering someone, that moment, just before that moment, you had the ability to make a decision either to engage in a sin or give it up and leave it. But you made the wrong decision and it will come to you that moment. It will be placed and it will be manifested in front of your eyes. When you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will ask you about it. The moment the Adhan was called, you know it's time for the prayer and you didn't pray because you were engaged, you were engaged with something else. Anything, any of these, these worldly matters, 
it will be brought to you and you will regret the decisions you made. When you listen to the whispers of shaitan, when you listen to the advice and the social evidence of your friends, of your family, of your culture, and you just flew with the tide, that moment will be brought to you and you will be asked about it and you will feel so much pain about it. The first moment of pain you'll start to feel is the moment the angels come to you and start dragging your soul out of your body. That's the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about in the Quran so many times. So many times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The moment death comes to one of them, he says, Oh my Lord, send me back. That's the moment the soul is dragged out of this body. Oh my Lord, send me back so I may do something good before I depart again. Do something good. He knows that Allah is merciful. He knows in a way that when Allah gives them the command, they just go about doing it automatically. They can't think of other choices. That's it. But Allah has, give, Allah has honored us as human beings. He's given us a trust. You can choose. You, the angels can't choose. You can choose. The sun and the whole universe in its magnificence cannot choose, can't make any choice. You can choose. You can choose. And this is why everything is put at your service. You can control it to a certain extent. And the most important thing to control is that piece of flesh that controls everything in your life. That's the central point. That's, that's the center of a human being. You control it. You can control everything in your life. You can, con you can control your eyes, your hands, your tongue, and everything. Discipline your heart. Everything will fall in place in your life.